Fox created. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Killer Keller Podcast, Rats Cast. I walk around town with my pants hanging down, holding my dick, then I talk that shit. We don't give a fuck about mumble rap, you better spit and talk that shit. Yo, when the street niggas become emo, I grew up off the Dr. Dre and Primo. These cats are selling a hole for a B-roll. Amber Rose niggas getting fingers up they bb hole. You can ask Debo, I'ma stay me though. Real life Call of Duty with the cheat code. Chest of the cheetah, eating chili cheese Fritos. Pinot Grigio, dark skin Filipinos. Filipinos, we will outlast. You on the broadcast, Killer Keller and Rash Cass. We have a guest in today, which I'm buzzing about. It came all the way into London, um, part of the rave scene as DJ Pilgrim, uh, and a very close associate uh, within the graffiti scene, going by the name of Taz. My friend here has gone and done himself a book, which without question, is more comprehensive than the Killer Keller podcast. Also cool is the man like Taz in the building. How are you, my brother? I'm good. You don't just do this. No. You don't just write, make a book. Or as everyone would be doing it. We've done it in quick time as well. I How mean, quick did it take? The initial conversation probably took place in about April 2022. Mm. The book was out on the streets... December the 22nd, 2022. You find people. What? And that was with some delays as well. Shame, shame, know your name. I am sitting here with a general, an OG, an original. Some of you may know him from past experiences such as Jungle Brothers, the Native Tongues, um, Straight Out the Jungle, the 40 Below Trooper, um, with the alternative uh, wave of new music under his belt. This guy's way more dimensional than you'd ever expect. Africa, baby, bam, inside the place. Jungle Brothers, how are you, my brother? Yes, I'm good, bro. I'm breaking the Africa, baby, bam identity. Okay. I'm breaking the Jungle Brother identity. Yeah. I'm breaking the Golden Era identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm breaking the hip hop identity. Yeah. I'm breaking all of that. Mm hmm. I'm breaking any name <laughs> on this body mm. and, the, and, the, and the identity that comes with it mm. and the conversations that come with it, mm. the script. Mm -hmm. I'm destroying it so I can see the clear wall mm. with no writing on it. And I'm breaking through that wall. That's what I'm doing. We have the esteemed privilege of a gentleman that pretty much street art buck stops right with his name from uh, the clothing brand to the synonymous Andre the Giant to the Obama campaign, right the way through to album covers galore, you know, is, is Obey, Mr. Shepard Ferry inside the place. How are you, Jen? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on. Doing, you know, doing things that empower you to be part of the conversation, even if mm -hmm. they're um, small or illegal, um, <laughs> they make a difference. And Don't know what you're talking about, Shepard. Don't know what you're yeah, talking about, this illegality. It, put, it, it puts the powers that be on notice that they don't get to just um, proceed with impunity against the will of the people. And, and, uh, and you know, street art um, or graffiti or, you know, in, any of these, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, acts of expression in public space might not seem like they matter much, but cumulatively it really does. And I mean, look at how, look at how threatened a lot of cities are by, by graffiti. They, you know, they prosecuted so disproportionately to, um, to what the, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a cosmetic offense. And, um, and yet they put people in jail over it. And, uh, you know, and a lot of people actually think it enhances a neighborhood that's where where we're getting into interesting territory now with the whole uh, argument of vandalism or gentrification. It depends on who you ask. 
for sure. And that, that's a beautiful space right now, right? Like, I... inside the house today, uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. the new generation is in full effect. This isn't just awesome. This is no buts. This is only the real deal. If you've heard of her on the road, if you've heard of her in the clubs, you definitely heard her on Pyro Radio and you're about Shoo. to hear about it here. S-A-S-A-S-A-S and also, mm -mm -mm. hold tight. P Money, new collaboration inside oh, the place. Here's Wiser. Killer, 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 killer. I remember when I first lost it really quickly, I was on set f for a booking that at that time of, of my journey, I was really excited about. And I mean like 10 minutes in and my voice was gone gone but like the thing is that i don't think people realize is especially when you're a newer vocalist and you're you're still you're hyped about it all it's all such an exciting process and it's not just the hour you perform or, or however long you're doing that you've got a usual mm -hmm. voice it's mm -hmm. the car journey on the way out there mm -hmm. with music on and people in the mm -hmm. car it's being in the ray shouting in people's ears over the music mm -hmm. it's then going home it's then chant it's like you, your Air voice is a muscle yeah. imagine you've spent your whole time doing biceps 24 mm. 7 everything mm. your arm like mm. it's exactly the same as your vocal cords man mm. and I, t I i actually had nodes in nodules vocal nodules back in the day when i used to sing in like competitions in school time mm. now, I had to go do if no one knows what nodules are it's basically scars that are formed on your over on your vocal cords because they tap together when you talk and make sounds and they become little lumps and they it dries them out basically and you lose your voice all the time and um that was probably a mix of shouting raving singing or everything at once mm. you know um but i had to go doctors at uh, they had to put a camera up my nose down my throat and they can really see what's going on there did you see it yeah yeah, 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 yeah it was, yeah, was it like, like when they it is like it's just like two little lines two yeah. little vocal cords and yeah. just inside touching each other they can be at different sizes at different places but they're just tiny tiny little scars that where and they rub together too yeah. much yeah, well you just, just like yeah, that, yeah, because yeah. no, no warming up. It's like when you go gym and you do like if anyone gyms mm. squats and doesn't warm up and then go home and two days later their leg feels a bit pulled. Yeah. It's literally the exact same, and I'd really learn that you have to look after it. Just but how like did you they would. fix that? Jeez, Killer Killer Podcast. Yeah, yeah, Skibber, Harry Shutter inside the ride. All right, let's do a little bar or two. All right, yeah. cool. Video kill the radio star, and that's the reason I'm vexed. Uh. Back to back to back raps on tracks, and the man's ready to get prepped. Uh. You can't do the things that I do, yeah, I'm through like Hannibal Lecter. Death car, red blood, vinegar, ketchup. I come back with a billion flavors, you're driving in bread crust. I beat them like boom, boom, boom. Trust them the whole bed, bro. Head butt, neck cut, that's your pushing two pecs up. Skibbity, I know everything, I'm like Siri or Alexa. When my hood's off, it's a killing spree and a killing field for the balaclava that was given to me by the skiver D. Thought they were taking a liberty, so I'm loading up some artillery and I'm letting off like the military on their millipedes. They wanna question my ability, them man, a mini me. Two lyrics and I murdered their epiphanies. That pimp at the website, shining bright like Tiffany's. As sick as me, that's a fucking lie. We're not similar, there's no symmetry. Simple Simon Rhyme is trying to blow up off something gimmicky. Because we've got one regular that is uh, been an avid fan of the podcast for a minute, um, yet doing a lot of damage out there. BK residency inside. Kimes in the oh, building. What are you saying, my brother? What are you saying, my brother? You good? <laughs> it's half anxious, anxiety and it's half like excited. Mm -hmm. So you just you, you just obviously choose the, the excited part of it. Yeah. But them them things are running, bruv. Your heart's going and I feel like listen, I've done some I've done some uh, substances in my time and it beats every one of them. Every single one. Mental wealth has nearly taken me out of this world. So when it comes to being in that situation, it's like that thin line, you know what I mean? That that thin line between genius and idiocy is the same line as that one. Like it's, you're like, oh, once you've done your thing, bro, it's the best feeling in the world. Hold on, mate. Another don coming through the building, three times world champion, tell a friend. It's no joke. <laughs> It's no joke. This guy's toured alongside a whole plethora of people, including my friend Beardy Man, beatboxer extraordinaire. Uh, and if I know anything for certain, when you're a DJ performing with such high energy, high technical ability, you've got to be pretty darn good yourself. JFB in the building! <laughs> Going back to just turntables, mixer and, and just records, it, the, 
the possibilities of things that people still haven't discovered, I think, personally, are endless. Really? I really do. When it comes to juggle patterns, scratching, or just things people haven't thought of yet, I, I do believe there's a lot to mm. still uncover there. But now we've got all the digital stuff, um, I think everyone thinks... There is a whole stigma, I don't even want to go into that, but there's a whole stigma of um, traditional versus technology. And uh, I think a lot of people are just assume that, that because the digital stuff has come out, like um, all the analogue, you know, like... Phase gets phased out. Yeah, or just like um, they believe like there's an advantage to using digital. Or, I mean, yeah, there is, but there isn't as well. Like you can still... Mm. do other stuff on the analog stuff that um, hasn't been thought of yet. Mm. I believe that anyway. Inside the place, Tokyo to be exact, I have a good friend of mine that's in the building and she has skills upon skills, skills that we're going to talk about within the B-Boy world. My girl has been travelling the world globally, trotting around social media a toe, and uh, I'm telling you something, this is a face to look out for. The future is bright. The future lies in her hands. It is B-Girl, Jilu inside the place. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> now, isn't that quite a profound statement as talking to a B-Girl? That, like, you, you walk away from a battle and there's always something that you've got to attend to. Yeah. Yeah, but it's um part is part of it is the rehab, the regeneration process mm. that we need to do. We need to learn how regenerative training works. And this is something that I'm working on with my coach. Um we need because I actually had a talk with a girl who's doing some kind of nutritional studies on me right now. And I taught I told her I don't have days where I don't train. And he's like, How do you regenerate? I'm like I do rege regenerative training. So in order to regenerate faster, it actually makes sense to train on a very low pace to get your body moving and to get your blood flow going so that you can regenerate faster so that the next day you can actually train hard again. That's hard. <laughs> It's happened, it's happening. Criminal damage in the building, trust me. Do one, cancer exclusive, stair CD, and of course, the mighty desire CD inside the place. <laughs> Don't get bigger than that of an announcement, does it? How are we, gentlemen? Most people these days do the same outline. That would take you like five minutes. If you keep doing the same outline, it ain't going to take you long, is it? Mm -hmm. If you keep trying different things, it's going to take your time. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So. People say, I, could, I can do a piece in like half an hour, but so what? Killer Killer Podcast, Mr. Williams. Boom! Bye 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 bye. Oh me, oh me, oh my. Killer Killer, go make them know what's up when I tell no lie. Oh me, oh me, oh my. See where ya, see where ya, we the in a the area. See where ya, see where ya, we killer killer. See where ya, see where ya, we the in a the area. And I'm Mr. Williams, life and living color because we, we, we have the lyrics library. Oh, we, we, we have the pattern plenty. Eh, 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 eh. Come make them know it's not no partiality. Eh, 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 eh. Come make them know it's not no carbon copy. <laughs> no for them a chat, you know them can't chat to we. Serious thing and it is no fantasy. Pattern where you want to have abundance. We're live right about now, transmitting all the way over to the States in an undisclosed location with a new album. So many other realities exist, which is definitely a calling to my man's career. He has been part of the hip hop tapestry for about 26 plus years. I could count it because it was one of the early doors. He was one of the first people I, I met on the tour of America. Um, and he's continued to deliver high class content music and more. He goes by the name of Slug. Hold tight. Rhymes say it's atmosphere inside the place. How are we, my brother? Man, we're good. How are you? One thing that I know that I can talk about as far as when it comes to us and 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 the who we are in this industry or the correlation between us and, and what has occurred or how we've managed to to stick it out and be here for so long. I think a lot of it mm. is it's just based in, you know, uh, at some point I figured out that my competition was myself. 
um, that I was I was I was not here to 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 compete with who's up and coming. <laughs> This gentleman transfers, transcends himself across different mediums of art. Without question, graffiti writer um, in the blood, taking highs of 20 years, would you believe? And back in and without even a blink, he's had a, an association um, with different areas of art in a very specific way. His style, you can tell a mile off. E one's reputable, only inside the place. Yes, brother. <laughs> I could see like the the reflection of the moon, right? On the steel. I can hear the rattle of the cans. I can see the fumes of the paint evaporating. And I tell you what, it was it was one of the moments where you just go, I'm fucking all in. <laughs> where to begin? Where to begin with a gentleman that's uh, part of our history? He's part of the landscape. Um, help put, I help build the landscape. You help build the landscape. Mm -hmm. You brought in people like myself to the landscape. Mm -hmm. You recognise what's great and what's mediocre. Mm -hmm. It's fucking Rodney I'd like, I'd like to think so. Rodney Peenhouse. <laughs> <It's laughs> Bionic, as an artist, is the one whose style many of the young people now use. And they don't even know who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, yeah, that yeah, hip-hop yeah, reggae you. style that he he brung to the table, mm. and that certain kind of swagger that he brung to the yeah. table, like they're, they're doing that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't know where it comes from, because it didn't exist in hip-hop before he did it. KRS-1, BDP, they were hugely influenced by reggae yeah. and ragga, but KRS for me, I was a huge KRS fan, still am, but when he tried to hip hop reggae thing, it never sounded No, and I don't know what, it never sounded <laughs> but when you guys did it, it was all right. It yeah. was almost like authenticated. Yeah. And you have to remember as well, we predate them. We have Wales representing, hello and people coming for a road trip. And they're inside the place. We get them a bag on, bring them on the podcast, you know. If you're from Wales, Cardiff, surrounding area, you'll know this man very, very well. We're going to indulge, get deep into his history and more. The Welsh side of things. Kesto inside the place. How are you, my brother? Good, thank you, bro. Thanks for having <laughs> me. Come out. I was only out 10 minutes. I was straight back in. So during that time... Um, I was recalled. I had a big license to do. I had like six years to do. So what? That was it. Once you're recalled on your license, mm. you're doing the six years until you get parole. So my head was blown, kind of thing. It, it, it was a, it was a bit of a tough time, but I, you know, I just swallowed it, whatever. But my mate was in there, and he was doing these murals with paintbrushes and shit. So I was like, "Fucking, let me jump on that." So in the end, we just had this job, me and my mate Noel, and we were going around like. The prison in uh, Bridgend, the park, and we were doing like big bow days on the wall and stuff the... it. Yeah. I keep holding on to all of my worries, as if it's gonna come, if it's gonna be a part of me. Say to me again what you said to me yesterday. Dividing up our paths, hoping that we'll last, going our own way. Passion only grows If I wanna go with you Begging, picking, no I just wanna know Will I have to choose In the end it's all the same In the beginning's never new Biting up our paths Hoping not to last Hoping not to last for you um, inside the house, it's a production day. It's a producer day. It's a beat maker day. It's one of them serious days where we get in under the hood of of the producer and the moving parts that create their music. Uh, this is about work ethic. This is about hip hop genre. This is about the beats, the rhymes, the life, the samples, the life and times of this guy. Collaboration extraordinaire, not to mention new EP on the way aspects. It's Vice Beats inside the house. There you go, it's my. <laughs> 
you look at where things were in like the early 50s, 60s, and then how it stipped, skipped up to people like Marley Mole mm. kind of figuring out how to program in a different way, mm. then leaping it 30 years to like what Dilla was doing and playing around with how NPCs worked and, mm -hmm. you know, the the idea of how Akai were building things and samplers and then it skipped again to this idea that it's on a computer screen, you mm. know, and you don't have to, like, meticulously bend and shift all of these buttons to do different things with it. It's like we've been moving towards this point our entire lives mm. in that way. So, like, you know, as much as, yes, there's, like, the the Gen Z generation of, okay, yeah, there's there's all this crazy technology going on. If you talk to our parents and their parents before that, this has been happening for 40, 50 years. Uh, part of the bigger Met bullies that, that troll the surface of uh, of London's underground for many a year, from the late 80s onwards, and uh, without question, uh, a formidable force. One you don't want to fuck with back in the day. She's in the building. Tish, how are we, lady? <laughs> I weren't really interested in none of that then. It's just on the damage and making money. They plotted up at Harrow, BTP, for 18 months, recording us. Every time... Because I got nicked in Neasden Yard once, right? <laughs> I went there with Aroma. And they took me to Harlesden Police Station, yeah? And they let me out. And I thought it was weird. Why are they letting me go? I knew after that, because they come and raid my house. But um, when you're a kid like that, you don't think. You just think, yeah, mm. NFA, I'm, I'm off. Paint all over me, but you're not charging me. We've got a new breed. New breed of drum and bass coming through. Hard. The culture is in safe hands. Drum and bass, DJ, Supremo, the might. Oh, and Graph Wright as well. Japper inside the place. <laughs> My God. How People like to play Xbox yeah. and do that. Like, that's their, like, game for when they go home. Mm. For me, my game is to go home and jump on Logic and make some dirty basses and yeah. some banging that drums and just... Yeah. Have fun, do you know what I mean? If any if any platform was to embody the kind of people that, that I and I I want to be present on a platform like this, it's you. You are the you are to me an embodiment of street culture. And the fact that you've gone so far as I'm doing that for for the culture. Yeah, well, that's you know what I mean? it is. I just probably it's just I complete it's just complete because that's what I love. <laughs> To me, Graph is about entertainment. I think you're putting on a show, you're kind of putting your name out there. It is, it is, man. All forms of hip-hop are forms of entertainment. Mm. I want you to know my name, mm. my Graph name. My name is Tease. I want you to know it. That's it. Bam, 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 bam. I want to put it up as much as I can. Hey, yo, hey, yo. Move, go talk like that ass on fire. Light your ass on fire, this is demolition Yeah, freestyle here on television Trust me, you know that I never stop I leave MCs dead in a bed of rocks Trust, take over your whole stage show Come with more lava than a volcano When I'm doing this, I hit the nucleus Might blow my top like Vesuvius I'll show you who this is I'm on the run like a fugitive Now whack fools to the damn crucifix When I come right through, you know that I'm moving quick Yeah at light speed, it don't matter if you're black, white, or Chinese, or Asian. Best step out the stadium, murder what whack MCs, my flow what high what maintenance. Trust me, you know I could never quit. It don't matter if you're rich or you're derelict. Right now, I kill it in the studio. Gangsters Paradise, RIP Coolio. Woo! <laughs> oh, now that felt good, son. How was that for you? In the world of soul, we have the likes of Kelly LaRock, Terry Walker. We've had some 
Don's pass through. <laughs> but this gentleman, from the early doors onwards of UK soul uh, and their reemergence, and then the heydays, the lows, the demores, the highs, the everythings. Kenny Thomas inside the place. How are you, my brother? How are you? <laughs> Good to see you, UK Keller. soul represented inside the place. OG status. <laughs> I mean, it's entertainment. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's always said it's like a, it's a, it's a public service sort of industry. Really, you're providing a service, and you're, and not a service. It's like. Um, you're really like um, providing provide entertainment and a release to people for what they do. Is you know you're you really are a servant in a sense. You know you're not. I don't see it as a pyramid where you're at the top and people at the bottom. I see it as something more inverted than that. You mm. know the people at the top and without them you can't. You know you can't. They don't put no bums on seats means you aren't. You're singing to an empty auditorium and mm. you, know, you need the fans. And it, there's some sort of reciprocating. Uh, participation in the whole thing, you know, mm -hmm. the hearing, the performing, the receiving of it, the, the giving back the energy from the crowd. Without it, you're screwed. <laughs> I had a very mad, mad one about five years ago. Um, my mum's father, so my, my granddad's brother, mm. uh, got in contact with my mum and said, so, you know, word through the grapevine does graffiti. Um, he's out there painting, he's, he's, he's doing pieces. We've heard that he's done a few commission bits. He's obviously very into it. Mm. Um, does he know about Sam? And my mum was like, oh my God, you know, I think it, it maybe even skipped her mind because it had been such a long time well, ago. who's Sam? Basically, he was a graph artist. And I think to the degree of, I mean, I've got his book here. Me yeah, and so if you're, yeah, the, uh, if you're um, listening and not watching, uh, switch your screen on now. But he, he did this in 1989. Um, it was one of the last things that he painted before he um, he passed away. Um, it's got old school score pieces. They're all dated from 1989 as well. So I know he was physically out there with his camera taking pictures. And and he, he definitely was part of the graffiti culture to the point where I'd say, you know, he had graffiti friends. He It was a big part of his life. Yeah. Um, but I don't know what his tag was. I don't know how prolific or not prolific he was. I don't know who he used to write with. I don't know what crew he used to knock about with, but um, it was definitely something that I've just always wanted to know a little bit more about him as a person and, and about his life. So I was hoping, obviously, if I send you the photo and we can, um, we yeah. can get that up, if anyone recognizes Sam we'll or- We'll get that up now. Yeah, if, anyone, uh, if any, anyone's got a story about him or any information about painting with him or just anything that you can give me, I would be so intrigued just to know about this family member's life and um, know a little bit more about his graffiti as well. So comment so, below if you know any intel on this. What's his name again one more time? So yeah, Sam, Sam Woodrow. And he, Sam uh, Woodrow. He's from, originally from West Straight and he lived in uh, Blossom Way. So South West London. <laughs> Movements on the streets. Our guest today is a lady that's travelled internationally as an international B girl, finest, breaking's finest, um, and uh, a Nike sponsor, uh, Ukrainian born, living over here in the UK. Stephanie inside the building. How are you? It looks, it sounds so romantic. <laughs> <laughs> I really love it. For me, just to be in a studio, listen to this music, just moving a bit, it's going to be better than just like sit at home, yeah. you know. But yeah, I practice really, I think, a lot. Three day, three times a day? One uh, time a day? Like, no, two, three times a day. Yeah, but it's not, as I said, just break a break and like once a day. So do you have Sometimes to stretch too. and stuff you stretch? and Stretch, yeah, gym, cardio. You yeah. go to the gym? Yes. Do you, do you break in the gym? No, I do like exercise, like workout. So where do you, where do you train? Where? Breaking, yeah. No, in the gym as well, but... I have a studio in the gym and like, some. Really? Yeah. Do people just stop and look like, <laughs> yo, there's somebody spinning in their legs in the gymnasium <laughs> over there.